Welcome back to another interesting episode of Faculty Development Program on March Unit Portal. In this recorded session, I will be talking about the question bank and categorizing questions in question bank. So, what is a question bank? If you ask me, when you have quiz in Moodle, the question or the items which you added to the quiz is going to be saved in your course page. Uh, within a course page, you will find a location called question bank. Under that question bank, all the questions which you upload, which you create is going to be saved. Now what happens is, uh, normally what we say is, people don't use categories. So when we don't use categories, if you are being asked to generate a report on clusters one items, clusters two items, it's going to be charged. So how we can avoid it? And um, if you are asked to take, or if you've been asked to conduct a exam of clusters two manually for three or four students with the paper base, how easy is it? And how we can do it within no time? So these are all what we are going to explore in next few minutes. To demonstrate this scenario, I have opened a course called Medical Insurance Building. In Medical Insurance Building, I had an end of course examination and I created all the questions which is close to 100 in end of course exam. So most of us, what we do is we go to the course and then we go to the quiz and then edit quiz and inside the edit quiz, we, add, we try to add questions. Now, when you add those questions uh, in your course page, under the settings, which is right here, and if you go to the more option, you will find a section called Co question bank. These questions which I have created for that quest is going to be saved on, or it is going to be here. So I have created a category called um, 08082020 with 50 questions. I'm going to show you how, how you can do that. So if you click on that, I will get other questions which has been used for that exam right here. Now, when you click on the question bank, you will find a page which, is, which has got four tabs. One is questions, categories and import and export. The questions are actually, you can directly create questions. So by default, uh, the course name will be appearing uh, when you click on the question bank. And when you click on new question, it goes to the default category. That should be probably your uh, course name. Now to create a category, before adding, adding the question, I would recommend you to go to category. Um, so under your course name, uh, create a subcategory according to your need. So I'm going to call this as class test one, and then I will create the category. A category class test one is created here. So I have got two. So I'm going to rename one as two and other as one. So I've got two class test category, and I've got a category. Um, so we'll instead of the date, we'll call this as class test three. So like this, I can create categories, maybe rename the categories also later, whenever you require. So I've got three categories, uh, classes one, classes two, classes three, and I have got default category. So already classes three has got some questions. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, when you click on classes three, you can see the questions coming up here. Uh, just to demonstrate the, the, the need, uh, just to show you uh, like you know, how the categorization can help you, I'm going to pick a few of the questions, maybe the first uh, 10 questions I'm going to pick and then I'm going to put that in class test one. So I pick the questions. Uh, let's assume that you forgot to categorize it and it is into your default one. So what you can do is you can create categories and then you can move it to uh, the particular category you would like to bring that question to. Now, if you see here, class test one has got 11 questions, class test three has got 39 questions. I'm going back to class test three, and here I've got a few other questions. I'm going to pick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, and 10. 
and then I'm going to bring this next 10 questions. I'm going to move it to class plus two. And uh, yeah, so we, here we go. So I've got uh, classes two with 10 questions, classes one with 11 questions, and classes three with 29 questions. Why I showed you this is because um, if you want, uh, let, let's say you forgot it, and then you want it, you then later you will collect it, oh, I didn't do the categorization. So you don't have to worry. The existing questions you can move uh, after you create categories. But ideally, before you start uploading the first question uh, in your course default category, you create the subcategories, uh, preferably like based on your assessment uh, elements. So if you have four, four clusters, create four different categories and upload the questions there. Now the questions are uploaded. Uh, let's say I go to categories, I can see that, okay, these are the three categories I've got, and I've got some questions here. I hope that this you are clear with categories and questions. So question tab is just for creating questions and categories is to categorize or organize questions in under appropriate title. Now next is import. If you are using the import method of adding questions, you will choose a file uh, format and before uploading the file, open the general tab and select the category which you wanted to save the question and then only you click on import it's very simple just a quick uh, point which you have to notice open the general tab choose a category and then only you upload the question if you're in need of um, uh, exporting questions for your uh, review purpose or to submit in your course file um, what you need to do is you can uh, click on the export tab and pick the print dot for review uh, uh, radio button and choose the category which you require to take the print out. So I am choosing the class test 2 category and then I'll click on export button. So it, within few minutes I'll get an HTML file and uh, that's actually uh, saved in my desktop. Now when I open it, it shows me the question, uh, the wrong option, the percentage which is like you know how much percentage is right and how much percentage is wrong. So the percentage will give you which is the right answer and which is the wrong answer. So this is an example of a question which has been exported by me uh, for the purpose of course file or maybe for the uh, review of uh, my questions. Uh, maybe I wanted to do a pre peer review about my quiz. So I can just generate a, a page like this, uh, save it as a PDF and control P, save it as a PDF and share it with your colleagues or maybe somebody did up uh, to uh, your course file portal so that's one of the example another uh, thing which you can use with exporters if you've been asked to conduct an exam or uh, either uh, for a student uh, who is not having my gmu or modal access or maybe you have been asked to conduct it on a paper what you can do is if you have questions ready in your category you can pick the category um, you you can remove this actually I forgot to mention about the printout also you can remove or you can keep it uh, that's so if you keep it it will show that it is from this course and this is a subcategory which you are picking this question from so in the exam purpose I don't need it so I'm going to choose text HTML and choose a category export the question so when I do that uh, like I, how I saw in the uh, exporting the uh, review question uh, format I will get the HTML file and if you open the HTML file you would see that the question paper appears to you or to uh, the student as a, no it looks like a question I mean as if he's doing an online exam but it is not uh, with inside the Moodle it is as an external file so you can share this external file with him or you can take a print of this and share it with the student uh, if you wanted to conduct it manually. So this is how you can work with the question bank in my GMU portal. I hope this video was useful. Please uh, do let me know if you have any questions or queries uh, on this session. Thank you and have a fantastic day.